Want to expand the reach of your content? Start a podcast, feature industry experts on your show, and leverage the influence and reach of your guests to grow your brand. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to B2B Growth. I'm Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. Today is another episode in our Behind the Curtain series. And as usual in this series, I've got with me James Carberry, the man, the myth, the legend, founder and CEO here at Sweetfish. James, how are you doing today, man? I am fantastic, dude. Really pumped to dive into uh, this episode about Google Alphabet Soup. Yeah, man. We're going to be talking about Google Alphabet Soup. We're going to be talking about a a pretty significant change in uh, how we approach podcasting and how we're looking to take advantage of a big opportunity with what Google is doing and the SEO opportunity when it comes to podcasting. So I'll kind of tee it up a little bit because I've been talking to a lot of marketing teams about this idea that we've been kicking around internally and starting to roll out as part of our process. And it it really stems from this idea of being more prescriptive uh, with our customers when it comes to content planning for their podcast. You know, a... A while back, I had Sam Balter from HubSpot on the show here in our Why Podcast Work series. And the title of that episode, I think, was our podcast, The Next Big SEO Opportunity, and had him on talking about an article that he wrote for Marketing Profs, basically unpacking the impact of Google transcribing all of the podcasts that are live in their directory audio is starting to make its way directly into search results as a result of that, not to be too meta, but much like we saw video now get its own place in search results. You know, you used to be five years ago, you had to go to YouTube and search for something if you wanted a video result. Now it happens right in the feed. A similar process is happening now with podcasts. I've I've seen it in my own results. And so We're doing some things to capitalize on that, to help our customers capitalize on that in tandem with moving to a more prescriptive process. So that's kind of the conversations I've been having around this topic. You've been talking to the team, um, some folks with some SEO chops. So I'll, I'll let you chime in kind of what's led you to thinking about this as well, man. Yeah. So like you alluded to earlier, Logan... We really have gone, you know, up until this point, we've been all in on this idea of content-based networking. I'm writing a book about it. It's about to be done. Uh, This idea that you can do business with the guests that you feature on your show. So it was almost like the content doesn't really matter. So long as you're building quality relationships with the guests that you're featuring on your show, making them look like heroes and rock stars, then you're going to accomplish the objective of having a podcast. And I have evolved, my, my thinking around it has evolved and matured to the point where I thought, man, and especially with us shifting into becoming a media company, when I decided four or five months ago, maybe six or seven months ago, that I no longer wanted to be a service provider. I wanted to build a media company uh, on the back of what I think is a a frontier with podcasting. There's just so much open opportunity uh, in massive industries. And I wanted to be the entity that came in and created a a podcast first media company to service all of the educational needs in all these different industries. And as I thought more and more about that, our model to do collective shows and to partner with multiple co-hosts that really celebritizing them and their expertise where we could really leverage their know-how of the industry and our know-how of 
how to create massive amounts of content uh, and chop it up into a lot of different ways. And so the, the one thing that was missing in our strategy was not actually knowing what to talk about, what episodes, what topics do we need to cover during these episodes that we're doing with our co-hosts because it had been so reliant on whatever guest the co-host brought on, whatever that guest wanted to talk about, we were at the mercy of that guest. And so we were making a pretty hard shift to say, hey, we are we are now going to only do solo episodes. Our co-hosts can still do interviews a few times a month if they want to do that. But what we found is most of our co-hosts actually don't enjoy the process of finding guests. It's a it's been a well, there's been a lot of friction in our process around trying to figure that piece out. And so going away from saying, hey, you don't actually need to find guests anymore. And instead, using this thing called what my friend Dan Sanchez calls Google Alphabet Soup. And it's essentially using Google Auto Suggest to tell you what keywords and phrases are being searched for. Now, we're using a tool called Moz uh, that is also allowing us to see a little bit more, a little bit more variety of, of data around these keywords. But for the most part, it's really just using Google to tell you what people are searching. And so, if we've got, for example, in our Crafting Culture podcast, Ryan Kohler is, is co-hosting the hiring series. So when we go to Google and we put in hiring, if you do hiring space bar, and then you hit A and see what pops up, then you hit B and another 10 or 15 results pop up. Then you delete that and hit C. And so you can go literally through the entire alphabet seeing what people are searching for as it relates to hiring. And so we can find that, oh, people want to know about hiring veterans. They want to know about hiring family and friends. So we're no longer guessing or allowing our content to be reliant on what Ryan's guest wants to talk about. Instead, we're saying, hey, based on our research, we know that these 45 topics are things that people are searching for what of these, Ryan, do you want to talk about? And so he can then come back to us and say, oh, I want to talk about you know, these 12 because we're doing you know, 12 episode series with our co-hosts. And we then go and say, okay, based on those 12, we're going to look at the, the top three ranking articles for those particular keywords. And then we're going to design an episode, outline an episode that allows us to create content that is better than what is currently ranking. Because at the end of the day, what Dan Sanchez has taught me about this is Google, everybody gets so tripped up in backlinks and all this technical SEO stuff. And he said that that this stuff does matter to a certain degree. But at the end of the day, Google wants the best content. They want to show the best content to that, that matches the search intent for what people are searching in Google. So if you can create better content, there's a good chance you can outrank Inc. Because so long as you satisfy that searcher's intent better than Inc. did or Forbes or you know insert big massive media conglomerate that has a lot of authority. And so that is what we're seeking to do now. So identifying what those topics are using Google Alphabet Soup, they going to our co-hosts and saying, hey, which, which of these topics do you feel like you've got a lot to say about? And then partnering with, with their expertise and our ability to do content planning and saying, okay, this, these, are the, these are the eight points that we need to make sure we touch on uh, based on what is currently ranking. And then here are another three points that we think we can add to make this even better than what is currently on the first page of Google. So I'm really, really, really excited about this strategy. I think it brings full circle to, uh, it just brings a much more strategic layer to the service that we're providing. Because once, once those solo episodes get recorded from our media days, flying to wherever they are, to wherever our co-hosts are, filming them doing these solo episodes, chopping it up into one to two minute videos like what you see on Gary V's Instagram and LinkedIn, and then distributing those across social platforms where people are actually hanging out. I think it's a triple threat getting written content, long form written content, audio content for podcast channels, and then video for social and YouTube. And I, I just think it's going to be a winning strategy. So I'm super pumped about it. Yeah, man, I am so excited. The way I've been explaining it to a lot of the marketing teams we're talking about and in our current customers who are co-hosts of our collective shows is, you know, we've been fortunate enough to to build a great team and build great processes 
through taking our lumps over the last several years and figuring out how to produce a show. And we've gotten really good at the production side. And what's exciting to me is, you know, we're moving further uh, to the right to uh, into more of the promotion, as you've been talking about, like creating the short snippet videos. And now we're moving more to the left, like pre-interview into more of this prescriptive content planning it's going to allow us to deliver better results for our customers. And so I just want to recap that because I think, you know, this strategy is something that other people can use. You know, it was really three steps. You're talking about identifying the search intent, you know, using this Google alphabet soup right in the search bar of Google and, you know, doing that hiring A, hiring B. And what you're talking about is then looking at the suggestions, not hitting enter and looking at the search results, but looking at the auto suggest, the search yes. suggestions from Google, then building a list of those topics, matching them with the person who has expertise to speak on those topics. And then step three is go, go back to those, hit enter, and then look at the currently high ranking content for that search term and then see if you can create content that either is longer, hits more, answers the question better. How can you make the content better than what is there? And then if you can do it in multiple channels, in multiple ways, then do that, which what we're looking to do is the audio content, since that is now being indexed by Google, you know, that's a win, but then creating long form written content as well so that, you know, it's hitting both. And then the video content to promote that content, because if we know people are searching for it, then if we can find them in search, that's great and meet them there. But if we can also create kind of teaser assets to help them find it on social, then there's that triple threat that that you're talking about. So that's the way I kind of sum it up. I, I think there's ton of opportunity here as you've been talking about, man. And I think it's something that other people can learn from and, and think about in their content strategy for their podcast or for their other channels as well. So thanks so much for unpacking it, man. And uh, I hope people listening to this get some value from today's episode. If you haven't been following us, James and I are both uh, pretty active on Instagram uh, these days. I'm at I am Logan Lyles at Logan Lyles was taken to one place where I can be at Logan Lyles. But anyway, James is at James Carberry. And and if you want to see more of what we're doing with this collective model, the content planning, the media days, and kind of our strategy there to see what you can take from that, follow us at Sweetfish Media um, and you'll see a lot of stuff happening there. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.